Investigator Anna Garcia live now. We must warn you that what she is about to show you is graphic and disturbing. Anna. Paul and Colleen, sex slavery and prostitution in our own backyard. That's exactly what authorities say is happening, and that's what we found in the most unlikely of places in Southern California. Police say that a ring has been smuggling women, maybe even young girls, into local communities for the purpose of sex. Hidden in these rolling hills of sweet strawberry fields in northern San Diego County is a secret. Oh, activity. There, darting across a field of weeds, is a group of what looks like students coming home from school. They kind of about anywhere from 10 to 15 girls. But these young women don't have school books in their backpacks. It's just an empty field. There's just no reason for them to be there. And the men they're about to meet aren't their high school sweethearts. This is where you'll be able to see the, the girls and the guys interacting. Deputy Rick Castro of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department diagrams the surveillance plan for the strawberry fields of Vista. Team 4 reports will accompany Castro and senior Border Patrol agent Andy Godinez. Some of them might be kidnapped. The authorities believe the young women may have been smuggled into the United States from Mexico by sex traffickers who prostitute the women to large groups of migrant workers. So this isn't uh, just prostitution? No, no. We, we, we believe it goes on uh, much deeper. The Londres girls were very young, 14, 15 year olds. They are being held against their will. Oh, yeah. Authorities say today's operation is about gathering intelligence for arrests at a later date. We don't know if they have a lookout. We don't know who's dropping off the girls. Uh, we don't know exactly where they're being dropped off at. The Team 4 reports investigators divide up into two teams. Team 1 goes with Agent Godinez, who watches a parking lot from behind these lemon trees. The traffickers are very manipulative. They'll lie to them, promise them good jobs, but once they get over here, they find themselves being forced into a prostitution. I hike up a hillside for almost a mile in Gopher Canyon with Deputy Castro. We comb through brush and weeds knee-high to a ridge where we can watch the women or girls enter without them seeing us. On our bellies, we perch ourselves on the cliff and wait. And then seemingly out of nowhere, we see females crossing the fields in groups. Then a man, believed by authorities to be one of the pimps, runs by. He catches up with the females and leads them to the oak trees. So far we've seen close to 10 females, and a few of them look like they're very young and still in their teens. Meanwhile, at the other location, men are starting to gather at the parking lot. Kind of like a fast food line, if you would kind of think of it that way. You know, there'd just be a line of men just kind of just standing around and just kind of talking, waiting for their turn. A few minutes later, the women reappear, now dressed in mini skirts and high heels. We think we've spotted a lookout on the hillside above where the women are getting ready. He's on a cell phone and appears to be calling to let everyone know it's a go. Back at the other location, men can be seen leaving the parking lot. Within minutes, the men arrive. And then what appears to be an exchange of money with the lookout takes place. This outdoor brothel is now open for business. A young woman dressed in a miniskirt carries a blanket and leads a man to the spot. And in plain view, we are about to witness several sex acts which we won't show you. Immigration officials say the young women are not acting out of free will. They're brought into the United States and they're basically, you know, kept captive. They're, you know, it's modern day slavery what's going on. If you believe that some of those women are actually teenagers, What's the struggle here as to moving in versus making sure you have the case? It's not about jeopardizing the case. It's just about losing the victims. They say we, we do go Russian right now. They have the lookout. They're going to see us way before we even get close enough. What if we lose all the young girls? We may never find them again. You can charge also $20 with a condom. 30 without a condom. Marisa Ugarte says she has helped rescue women from what she calls California's fields of shame. There's not just one campana, there's seven or eight. In this field of overgrown reeds and bamboo in Oceanside operated the biggest outdoor sex camp of its kind, according to authorities. A few steps off Old River Road, and you're in bamboo that's eight to ten feet high. You've got an outdoor brothel going on yeah. here. Yeah, and, and, and you can see from where we're at, no one even knows we're in here. Deputy Castro shows us how the bamboo has been carved out and bent to make caves. The path to the sex caves are well-worn and apparently still in business. The, the tissues are used after they complete their act. 
It's almost impossible to find sex camps like this because they're hidden and they're also changing locations and times constantly. This INS surveillance tape taken by an undercover agent wearing a hidden camera shows how this field we just showed you is transformed into a brothel in the bushes. Here you can see how ordinary black trash bags are used to give a little privacy. It's actually sex slavery. This man is a federal trafficking investigator. He's asked that his face and voice be disguised because of his undercover work. This kind of treatment is animal-like. You know, We just can't let him uh, do this to women in, on American soil. A raid of the Oceanside sex camp on December of 2001 netted 47 arrests, but the charges were dropped because the women wouldn't testify against their alleged captors. Why? Because of tactics like this. Punishment would be rape and sodomy, um, forced abortions we've seen. Over the last few years, the police say that they have busted numerous sex trafficking rings in northern San Diego County. These police photos show how the women were housed. She's anywhere from 30 to 50 girls are working here, and they're servicing anywhere from you know, up to three to 500. This notebook, according to police, is a record of how many Johns the women had serviced. Each mark indicates an encounter, and in this photo, you can see a used condom on the floor. But despite these repeated busts, the sex trafficking continues, which brings us back to the strawberry fields of Vista. To the trafficker, the children, they're expendable, reusable, and resellable. And that makes them a, you know, a precious commodity. Shortly after we left the strawberry fields, the fire department arrived to investigate a possible case of arson in one of the nearby homes that may have been started by one of the traffickers to intimidate the homeowners. Well, they didn't know about the police surveillance, so when the police, when the fire department arrived, everyone you saw in that report, the men and the women, scattered, thinking that they were being raided. And now the authorities say that this ring has been driven further underground, and it will be unlikely and very difficult to ever find those women.